Are we uh, already? We're already rolling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, my name is Jürgen Reis. Um, I'm the chief engineer for MBL for over 35 years now and uh, responsible for the sound of every MBL product. Yeah. Uh, we began originally with speakers and then follow up with preamp power amps and then later with uh, CD transport and DA converters. The uh, MBL 101, so this is uh, basically the latest version of the basic idea uh, why MBL was founded. This speaker is basically uh, um, an omnidirectional loudspeaker system, so it radiates 360 degrees. Um, and uh, best I can explain with these large pedals here, uh, we have these banded segments and they are around, arranged around the middle axis and when the segment goes outwards it creates the sound pressure. And we have these larger uh, segments for the bass, smaller segments for the mid-range and the tiniest uh, segments for the tweeter. And all are around the same middle axis so it's time coherent. So the frequency for the bass, mid-range and tweeter reach the listener for the same time. And below we have here with this version a passive bandpass subwoofer uh, to extend the low frequency range. This is the evolution of the basic idea. The, the, the company began with the MBL 100. This was basically a two and a half way system. Um, so this is the latest developing stage, but we have also uh, come down to a sort of hybrid models that consist the, always the same tweeter and mid-range driver, but have a different uh, mi uh, low mid or bass driver. So we have the 111, 116, 121 and 126 going below. And also we have an um, a upscale version of this, the MBL 101 Extreme, which consists two of them stacked in Diapolito alignment and which come with these active subwoofers instead of this passive subwoofer. Uh, our biggest market is Asia. A couple of Asian uh, countries uh, we sell the most and we have the, the largest customer base. Yeah. You can start, I think, with a, uh, around 20 something thousand, and uh, with the MBL Extreme system, uh, with all the electronic ends, you can uh, over a quarter million. But then you have a really a massive system then, yeah. Yeah, so you need the room for that, right? Uh, normally I would say yes, but I'm surprised that in Asia they have also some customers which have smaller rooms. And the thing is that if the room is, is not naked, if the room is a little bit packed with uh, LPs or books, uh, you can also have this extreme system in smaller rooms. This is not a problem, yeah. It can play in large rooms, yes, but if you sit down, you can also uh, enjoy the system in smaller rooms. Yeah. Okay, here uh, actually in this setup, uh, we are using our biggest amp, the MBL9011 power amplifiers. These are monoblocks and uh, these monoblocks have a, a class A core circuit. Um, who is running always in class A and this circuit swims on a larger power supply which is AB driven so uh, this uh, power amplifier can also deliver over 1000 watt even the class A cell is only 50 watt but it, it mm. swims with the signal it has a very high bandwidth so uh, several hundred kilohertz uh, and goes down to DC and uh, also can drive very low lo uh, loads and can also drive very high uh, phase um, angle between uh, voltage and current. So you can drive nearly every speaker which is available.
Sure, there are some electrostatics, they go very, very low. Mm -hmm. You have to have some special amplifier ca uh, amplifiers for that. But for a regular speaker, you can drive anything. Yeah. Um, if you use the MBL amps with the speakers, you are on the safe side. But I uh, have to say that there are also some other companies out there that can also develop good sounding power amplifiers. Uh, you do not need uh, too much power, depends on your room size, but uh, the amplifier must have a neutral uh, sound balance. Neutral doesn't mean low uh, distortion, it means that uh, distortion between bass and, uh, and treble is in balance and that the power amplifier can also deliver um, current and phase angles. So the, the wattage itself doesn't tell you much about the sound of the amplifier, but there are some uh, other brands, 200 to 400 watts, which also works very well with the speaker. Um, as I do also visit a lot of customers, um, I have a little bit of feeling what the typical or the best uh, sound for those customers is. So there's not the absolute best sound. Uh, uh, sure, I have a sound in my mind and uh, I, I do tweak then afterwards to reach the sound. And also this sound does change over the decades. So what I do uh, um, to now is different than that I have done 10 years ago or 20 years ago, even for the same um, customer base, because the musical taste and the taste of sound does change over the decades. Now, the thing is that uh, over the decades, the, the bass content is increasing in music and also the travel content. And so if you, uh, the BBC is uh, analyzing every broadcast music and so you have a, a curve of average what's it's broadcast in the last 10 years. And this curve is uh, normally used for testing speakers to cover what's the average music, the, the average customer does play with the speakers. And, but this curve does change over the years. Slowly, very slowly, but it does. And so the demand of the of all audio components do also change. So the um, if you're looking uh, 30 years back, uh, the demand to play low uh, um, frequencies with high level was not existing. So uh, at nowadays, there are a lot of recordings that have a, a high sound pressure level with low frequency. So uh, the amount, the uh, demand for the speakers and for the power amplifiers has changed. Typically, um, there are some, a lot of classic and jazz, but we have also totally different customers who uh, listen only to, uh, techno or disco or rock. Uh, it depends on uh, um, the background, where the customer is coming from, what he has listened to uh, in his youth, and you can um, choose or adapt then uh, also the sound of the system to this uh, taste. So if with the choose of different cables, external different cable or also inside this loudspeaker, we have different parts uh, for the signal path, which doesn't change the frequency response, but does change the sound. So for example, for the tweeter, we have three different internal wirings. Um, we have um, silver plated if someone wants more a shiny sound. We have salad core if someone wants to have a relaxed sound and we have braided copper where we have uh, select as a neutral position. So um, with the speaker, you can adapt to different tastes. Yeah, but you do cannot measure this change. The thing is that you can measure the skin effect if you silver plated or a, um, opposite side if you have a solid core. But these um, effects are in the above the hearing uh, range. But uh, most hi-fi uh, persons and also my experiences, if I choose a different external cable with 
with external uh, with different material mix it does sound different and if i can reproduce this and can relate to this uh, change in sound that um, i'm very um, safe that with with when i choose then a uh, silver plated a cable inside for the tweeter that most customers will hear that the sound sound allow, sounds a little bit more open and more speedy in the in the treble. Even there's no difference in frequency response or THT response, nothing. Yeah. That's right. So with, with every product, so the measurements uh, does give me. Uh, over 95 percent so i always start with a measurement but then uh, the, the the final tweak which also can take several weeks months uh, does uh, bring me the last five uh, persons but these last five persons are very 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 important so this is not just this five percent this then gives the character of this of the product and for loudspeaker it's it's uh, more easy to understand that tweaking does influence the sound but uh, what uh, very very complicated to to explain is uh, in a preamplifier because it's relatively easy to to develop um, a preamplifier which which measures relatively good so from the frequency response noise response and also uh, from the distortion performance this is not that complicated to make a, a good measured preamplifier but um, then voicing of the preamplifier you need much experience uh, about all different parts which are in the preamplifier the, the volume potentiometer has a large influence in the sound every resistor or capacitor in the preamp has a huge impact and you need to know every part which is in the preamplifier and if you have enough uh, experience i can make this preamplifier sounding totally different without uh, changing the, the specs Absolutely. Yeah. For example, a resistor. If I <coughs> have um, uh, the similar as with the speaker wire, if I have a, a, a metal film uh, resistor or a carbon resistor, uh, within the, the levels I use in the preamp, it matches absolutely the same. If I use this um, uh, resistor and measured it with a level with 100 volt, I can measure that the, the carbon resistor began to um, add uh, K2 distortion. Um, so, um, but in the signal path, the, the signal is so low on this resistor that I cannot make any mm, uh, difference in measurements, but I hear this. Also the same with the volume knob. If I have a, a volume pot with, with carbon or with a plastic, it sounds different. Yes. Absolutely. The, so the measurement is always the start and every product should measure reasonably good. Sure, there are also some exceptions and the hyper market which uh, the measurements is very questionable. This is a different story, but I would like to have always a good foundation on the measurements and then uh, uh, tune the product to the sound that I think would fit the customer base. And also, if you um, uh, look at this preamplifier, um, there are several versions, and several versions uh, over the decades do change in sound because the, the, the uh, as I said before, the um, music uh, mix also ch has changed in the decades, and so the preamplifier has also to adapt. And we have also some customers who have different versions. They have the version A and B and C because for some older music, he prefers the A version and for some modern, uh, modern music, he uses the D version. Yes, yeah. So you, when you're finishing, when, you've, when you're about to sign off on a product and say, this is finished, you don't finish with a measurement kit. No, 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 no. You finish with the ear, right? With the ear, absolutely, yeah.